St. Peter A.M. Zion Church in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, <clears throat> where we're under the leadership of Bishop George D. Crenshaw and our presiding elder, our Reverend Dr. Jeffrey L. Cameron. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Not only that, the songwriters say that we should enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Amen. Y'all come to praise him this morning. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm, just, I'm just checking. I'm doing a check right now. All right. Because it seems like we're a little tired or look a little gloomy and we need to brighten up for God in this house this morning. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we call to worship. Those that may be worshiping with us um, via Facebook or our social media, thank you for being in uh, service on today. The Lord is in his holy temple that all the earth keeps silent before him. <clears throat> Taylor. Okay, can everyone buy the here? Father, as we assemble here today, we invite your presence to enter our hearts and minds. Saturate this place so much so that anything that is unlike you cannot stay. Your presence brings peace. Your presence breaks yokes. Your presence shifts the atmosphere and your presence changes things. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And now we are in anticipation of your awesome power. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 We'll be led by, in our Apostles' Creed by Brother Jackson Taylor. Tucker. Tucker. I gave him a, new, a new name. <laughs> That's on the stand. May we all stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from whom he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the universal church. Now we have a song by our children's youth choir. Look at God. Amen. 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 <laughs>
and they sing that with some clarity. Lord, there is none like you. I'm so glad that there's none like our God. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that our God don't have different attitudes. I'm so glad our God don't have different spirits. Our God don't have different voices. One God that we serve. Uh, you know, the two leaders there just inspired me. That were singing that song, Lord have mercy. Did you hear come in while they were singing? Oh, thank you, Sister Robin. Training them how to sing. Amen. I don't want them to stop that song. You know, because I'm reminded that there's none like they reminded me. Amen. Amen. That we serve a true and awesome God. Amen. They reminded me that even though I'm dealing with someone over here, <laughs> Come on now. that we serve someone up there yeah. that they're not alike. Amen. They reminded me when folks get to talking to me any kind of way. <laughs> That there's none like God that will talk to you in the way that you want to be talked to. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, children. Let us prepare for minister of kindness. Ursus will come. A minister of kindness, we've asked for five dollars. We've cash out. I was already, thank God, for cash out. For those that may not have uh, five dollars. Um, the word of God said, give, but don't give grudgingly. Amen. is he that considers the poor the Lord will deliver him in a time of trouble as we have therefore opportunity let us do good to all men especially unto those who are of the household of faith Whatever you would that men should do to you, do even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Let your light shine before men, that we may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal.
culture will be led by Brother Ian Hughes. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. God's word for God's people. Amen. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for prayer uh, by Sister uh, Joseph Tucker. Amen. Amen. Move by his presence. Lord, I just want to pray today for all the people who came to church today. Um, for me and myself, for Dusty. Everybody who didn't come or didn't make it, I just want to pray for them. Um, pray for family. Um, people that tried to come. Amen. I pray for everybody in the church. Amen. I give everybody praise for that people eat this morning, yes. for making sure that people had clothes on their back this morning, yes. and for making sure that people had the right to get here this morning. Yes. And I just want to thank the Lord for everything that he does for us, yes. and the way that he treats us. He treats us with glory, honor, and praise, and I just want to thank him for everything that he has done. In Jesus' name. Y'all sound better than the kids got to be saying y'all going to cool down on me. <laughs> uh, 
First of all, I want to thank Brother Carter for yesterday. Uh, we were at uh, the VA hospital, and I want to thank him for that project and helping me out and doing a wonderful job. Uh, St. Peter, you always uh, show out, and I appreciate it. Uh, our box ran it over yesterday. All of that goes to the clothing closet at the VA hospital, and they give them out as they need to. Uh, but we want to thank y'all for your help. As a matter of fact, they've asked us, you know, to do some continuous things. So I'll be coming back to you. We'll be coming back to you. And Brother Torrance, thank you. He was keeping us straight over the end. Pastor, <laughs> uh, Pastor Freeman, yeah, he showed up. Thank you for the best. Uh, he did show up as well. Thank you for everybody who came. But we're going to do some continuous things uh, with the VA hospital through our veterans ministry. So I want to thank you all for that. I, I, I had so many things going on in my head that I wanted to say uh, before I got up. And then the girls, well, the choir got up and sang. The two little girls that led the song kind of messed me up. <laughs> I, 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 lost, I lost all of them. But, you know, if it wasn't for the Lord, who was on our side? Come on now. Uh, where would we be? That's right. So we have to think about that in our giving. He gave so much for us, to us, and always there with us, you know, when we're sick, when we're down, when we're uh, feeling bad. You know, they always talk about that midnight hour, but sometimes I'm feeling bad in the, at noon in the daytime. <laughs> but he's still there with me. You know what I'm saying? So I have to think about that in my giving. Uh, the Lord asked us for a tenth. And if you can't pray about it, you know, pray that the Lord will train you, teach you, give you the means, give you the things that you need to do so that you can do that, so we can be obedient in his word. Amen. 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 So that when he, you know, we just don't have to call on him for everything, right? Well, we do. So when he asks us to do what we need to do, we are able to do that. Amen. That's why I'm here. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for these children, Lord. I thank you so much that you have allowed them to come, Lord. It gives me hope for the church. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone that's gathered here today, Lord. We pray that you will bless this offering, Lord. Multiply so it can better go with the given for us. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Lord, all stand. Bless thou thy gifts. Thank you for the gifts.
Jesus Christ. We come to say thank you for waking us to be here to see another day. Now as I stand before the peoples get ready to bring your word, as I decrease it and you increase it, I pray that you'd open up ears, touch minds, and touch hearts. That the words that come out, they come out with understanding. We give all thanks to you, God. In Jesus Christ, majestic and loving name, amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let us say amen again. Amen. And amen one more time. Amen. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. I thank God for allowing all of us to be here again to see another Sunday. Yes, Lord. Thank you. I don't know where. But I believe somewhere in this world, somebody didn't wake up on this side. Yes. But praise God, he woke us up. Yes. And I thank God for speaking in the heart of Pastor Freeman, for allowing me this opportunity to stand before you to bring his word. Thank God for him, 
his wife, Ms. Shonda Freeman, and the rest of their family. Thank God for our bishop, Bishop George D. Crenshaw, his wife and their family, our presiding elder, Dr. Reverend Jeffrey L. Cameron, his wife, their family, the ministers of this church, Sister Minister Benetta Stewart, her husband Kevin Stewart, and their family, Reverend Fred Abernathy, his wife, and their family, and Minister Belinda Wilson, her family, Reverend Moe, he fellowships with us, his family, and I thank God for all the stewards and deaconess, and the rest of you all make up the rest of this congregation. Of course, I thank God for my little boo boo back there. <laughs> yeah, I thank God for our neighbor, too. I see my neighbor back there. She's up here. You know, I'm going to let her introduce herself, you know, during the visiting hour, visiting stand, but she's fellowshipping with us, too. The sermon God giving me to preach to y'all, it's not going to be that long. But I can go tell you right now, if y'all got a barbecue, you ain't got to worry about it. <laughs> you ain't going to be in that long. I can tell you that right now, you got to worry about it. But the sermon God is giving me to preach to y'all, Pastor Freeman preached this sermon at Brother Tommy Lott, homegoing service. And I was trying to get out of it, but the Lord said, no, you're going to preach it. He said... You're just going to, you know, be some things a little different. And by the way, Pastor Freeman allowed the Holy Spirit to use him in a powerful way that day. Amen. But not prolonging it, I'm going to read from you verse 6 out of 2 Timothy, verse 6 through 8, chapter 4. And the words read as follows. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearance. Amen, amen, and amen. And for our topic, our topic is going to be finish the race. Finish the race. Simple as that. And I'm going to use an illustration. Think of yourself running in a marathon race. You know, and this marathon race is basically covering 15 miles. And whoever wins this race they're going to win $20 million. And let's just say you and 19 others participate. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to train and get yourself in the best of condition you can because you're going to love your chances because you and 19 others running in this race. But remember this, church, nothing is permanent on this side. Amen. Everything is perishable. And whatever you get, you can't carry it with you. I can all tell you that right now. I don't care if somebody got $700 zillion. And if they wanted to be buried with them, they can't carry it. They may tell the funeral director, say, well, uh, I want you to bury my money with me. The funeral director may put it in there with don't leave. <laughs> but even if he do or uh, she do it ain't going to be down there that long because <laughs> he's going to be so big down there trying to dig it up and I'm not going to sit up there and laugh to I'm going to be one of them down the trying <laughs> I don't deal in cemetery but this one time I believe I called Pastor Freeman he's going to call Pastor Freeman so Pastor Freeman I need a favor <laughs> he may say well, what is it real I said uh, it's 700 zillion dollars in the ground. I need you to hold his flashlight. <laughs> Pastor Freeman may say, well, I can tell you right now, what if somebody pop up out the ground and say, boo, we're going to tell him, boo, back. <laughs> so we can use it because we're still on the side. We can use it. But my point is, church, you cannot carry nothing with you. Everything All is right. perishable. <laughs> but there is two places in the world that is going to be permanent. Really, two places are going to be permanent. 
those who do not live for God, we already know where they're going to be turned into destruction. But those who give their life over to the Lord, there is a time there's no more hardships for them. And all God is asking us to do is finish the race when we give our life over to him. It's a spiritual race. And that is just living according to his will. You see what I'm saying? And um, I know trials and tribulations don't feel good. They don't feel good at all. I tell you, church, just think about it now. Our parents, when they chastise us, it's tough. But God, like I say, church, is always in control of things. God's word is this. He said, I won't put no more on you than you can bear. But otherwise, his burden is light. And he said, I will give you rest. Therefore, God will end the trial if he said it gets too tough. And because God can do that because see, all power belongs to God over heaven and earth. Yeah. He's in control of trial. He's in control of everything. If I had Job in here, Job would be a witness to me. Job would tell you, say, yes, God allowed the devil to test him. But he gave him restrictions. He said that you could do anything to him, but you can't touch his soul. So you see, church, God is in control of it. And like I said, I know chastisement does not feel good at all. But think about it now. You would rather be last on this side than first. Because being last on this side going through your trials and tribulations, it's only temporarily. It's just like if you have the toothache. You got to get the toothache one more time in your life. And if the Lord said, well, I tell you what, I can let you catch it today. Or you can catch it years later on. But I can let you get it today, you know, and it ain't going to last no more than about 10 hours. You were probably going get to get it today because you said, I'd rather get it over with. But you, you ain't got to deal with that, you know, the problem no more. That's just how it is with God, you know, once we leave this world. Therefore, church, we ain't got to worry about the headaches in the next world. Amen. All that's behind us. And what I was saying about chastisement, think about it now when your parents used to chastise you. You know, when something would go wrong, you do something wrong, they would say, well, you know what? You're not going to use the car this weekend. We're going to ban you from driving the car for a couple weeks. Or they may even just say, we're not going to give you no allowance for a couple weeks. But they may be like my parents. They might just tell you, go out there and get me a switch. <laughs> and I used to always go out there and get a little switch, probably no bigger than that. And they said, that ain't good enough. They would come back in there with something like a treat. <laughs> <laughs> and if they told me, said, well, go get me a belt, I would go get a little thin belt. But they would come back with a belt big enough for Santa Claus to put it on the <laughs> But they did it. See, and our parents, they did that with us because they loved us. They love they love, so they're trying to teach us what is right. And that's why God allows us to go through trials and tribulations. Because, see, all they're doing is he's down the chastisement to make us stronger. Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about God chastises those who he loves. And the reason is because, you know what I said, he loves because he loves us all, but those who are willing to give their life over to him. And I know I've had some people tell me, say, man, uh, you're going through a lot. I don't see how you can do it, man. I ain't going through nothing. I said, well, you know what? You need to check yourself. <laughs> because if you're a Christian, God, you're going through something. If you ain't going through nothing, there's something wrong with you right now. You're on the wrong side. Well, I thank God because, see, these trials, as you know, and I'm still preaching the scripture because these trials, as James would say in James chapter 1, James would say, he said, the test in our faith should bring joy to us. Now, I know it don't, how could you say, man, I'm going to follow this, and how could you tell me I want to bring joy to me? Well, I tell you right now. See, as you endure <coughs> one trial, it makes you whole. And then when the next trial comes, you say, well, God brought me through that trial. And I trust that he will bring me through this trial. Mm -hmm. And after that, you just continue. He, he, 
putting your trust in what you can't see. And once your journey on this side is complete, see, you finished the race. Because, see, then, because you held on. You trusted in what you trusted God. You accepted him. Amen. And I tell you, nothing more than joy to know him when you hear God tell you these words, well done. Amen. There's nothing more joy. But getting on into the text of our sermon, like I told you, I wasn't going to be up there that long. The apostle Paul is about to die. And Paul is basically, like I said, giving his farewell speech. And he's saying this reward, not only for him, but it's for everybody. But let me give you a little history on Paul. There was a time Paul was on the wrong side. Like we are. He was a very notorious man. He was called Saul. Mm -hmm. And he would even put Christians in jail. Mm -hmm. Or even kill some. Mm -hmm. But he had an encounter with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. on the road of Damascus in the book of Acts chapter 9. And when Jesus blinded Saul physically, he saw his spiritual blindness. But all he thought was he was doing right. It was wrong. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told him, I want you to go to this place called Straight. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a man named Ananias. Mm -hmm. We'll pray for you mm -hmm. that you can get your sight. Mm -hmm. And when he got there, Ananias, you know, did probably what I did. He said, Lord, we've heard the things this man is doing. So I probably said, Lord, you need to keep him like this. <laughs> but the Lord said, no. He said, Saul is going to be an instrument for me. And notice these words. He said, I'm going to let him know how much you got to suffer for my sake. And yes, church, when he became Paul, he was a man that endured a lot. But he did not allow his circumstances to get the best of it because he kept his eyes on the prize. Amen. Yes, he did. Oh, this was a man, if you read in the book of 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 11. He was beaten 40 stripes, minus 139. He was stoned. He was beaten with iron rods. Oh, church, he was in the deep perils, shipwreck, hunger. If you read in Acts chapter 28, he had a snake stuck on his hand. But he kept his eyes on the prize because he knew once he left this journey, this side, therefore all these troubles would be behind him. And that is what he's telling us now, church. The same prize is awaiting us. Because the same prize as Paul receiving from our Lord, we are too because the reason is. It was one Friday, church that they took Jesus up on Calvary. Oh, yeah. And when they took Jesus up on Calvary, they stretched him wide, church. Mm -hmm. And they pierced him in the side. Oh, yeah. They hung him high. Mm -hmm. They nailed him in his hand. They nailed him in his feet. And he would hang up there six long hours for you and I. Mm -hmm. And People mocking him, saying, you saved others. Now come down and save yourself. But Jesus would not. Because he loved us so much, he knew he was our only option that we can get it right with God through him. And he got thirsty, church. And he wanted something to drink. And they gave him sour vinegar or something like that. And he said these words, it's finished, it's finished. Now, he was not tired, church. No, he wasn't. All he was just saying, he had paid our ransom. All he said, church, was he had redeemed us. Mm -hmm. What he was saying, church, he had corrected one man disobedience. That was Adam mm -hmm. and Eve. And he was saying, church, now with the veil in the temple being torn, 
that now we don't need no priest to come before us, mm -hmm. to intercede for us. We can come before the Lord our Savior. Yes. And it didn't end their church. They took him down mm -hmm. and placed him in a bar tomb. Mm -hmm. And he would lay there all <laughs> Friday night. And he would lay there all Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And all Saturday night. But some Bible scholars say something happened early that Sunday morning that sounded like an earthquake. Mm -hmm. That he was resurrected, church. Amen. With all power given to him over heaven and earth. Amen. And now, church, he's going to come again one day and get all of those right now, church, who have lived before him on this side. And therefore, church, they don't have to worry about no trials and tribulations on the other side. Because one thing I know in my heart, and I believe this, Jesus is a wonderful counselor. Yes. He is a prince of peace. Mm -hmm. Oh, he is a everlasting father. Yes. He is the word, church. The word says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Yes. And the word was God. Well, oh, I can go even a little deeper, church. You can read in the book of Exodus. When he told Moses, he said, I want you to go back to Egypt and leave my people out. And when Moses said, I tell him that the God of your father sent me. And they asked me, who is he? He said, what should I tell him? And the Lord said, tell him I am who I am. Yes. He is the eternal everlasting God, church. Oh, I tell you something, church, right now. He said he lives around me, so you ain't got to worry about no more trials. No more tribulations. Yeah. You ain't got to worry about going to the doctor no more. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about being hungry no more. Yeah. You ain't got to worry about even paying bills no more. Oh, that's behind you. You ain't got to worry about, like I said, you go to the doctor, the doctor will say, well, you know what? We done found something wrong with you. Uh -uh, you ain't dying no more. They call Jesus' words is, I am the resurrection and the Lord. Yes, he Lord. that believeth in me shall hey, hey. live and not believe. Come on now. Believe in me and shall live everlasting. Yeah. Yeah. You got to ask the church, hold on. Because one thing about Jesus, church, Yes, he loves us. I know, church, right now, it gets hard on us. It gets hard on us. Believe me, I know a lot of you probably on jobs. And your boss is, you know, telling you, doing you all kinds of ways. Oh, I know there are going to be tough obstacles coming your life. Well, you know, God may have. You know, just like uh, when Jesus had to tell a little rich boy, he come up to Jesus. And when he said, well, Lord, good teacher. And Jesus I had to tell him only the Father is good. Mm -hmm. And he said, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus said, well, obey the commands. Mm -hmm. But Jesus off the way. He said, well, I do that. He said, Jesus will give all your livelihood to the poor. Mm -hmm. Well, he went away sad. So it may be a job that you may be on. The Lord may ask you, okay, I want you to walk away from it. Mm -hmm. It may pay you, what, six figures. But if the Lord telling you to walk away from it, he still got something for you. Amen. Oh, I tell you, sir, I know it gets hard. Mm -hmm. It gets real hard, but believe me, church, finish the race. Amen. I ain't talking about running, but I'm talking about once now. You've given your life over to the Lord. Yeah. Completely do his will, and once that day is over, when you depart this side, you hear the Lord tell you, well done, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's the sermon. I'm going to ask the doors of the church to go open. If any of you in here who do not know the Lord, you can feel free to stand right now. We ask you to stand right now for discipleship. Excuse me. Stand. The doors of the church is open. If there's anyone in here who do not know the Lord, here's your opportunity. You can come and get in the race. I tell you right now, you can't pay your way for this. This is a free gift from God. You don't want to be left outside. You know the story about the ten brides, five foolish and five wise. And the five wise ones, they had all waiting and they left waiting on the groom. And the five foolish ones did not. And words got to them that the groom was
I think the door was locked. Because, see, the Lord had came. The room had came. So that's what it is. You want to be prepared. If there's anybody here who desires prayer, anybody here right now who wants to just come and join this trip, feel free. We will not push you back. Brother Larry Boston. And there may be others, Father. But you know who they are. You see all and you know all. You're so powerful. Nothing get past you. Father, we lift up those that might be going through any type of depression, those that might be bereaving. Those, Lord, that may have financial difficulties, Father, you own everything. We lift them up to you right now. And then, Father, help us, Lord, to keep this message near and dear to our hearts. That as we leave this place, that we'll be reminded that there is a prize laid up for us if we just stay in the race. If we finish the race, Father, we'll see you in the end. Now, Father, we ask that you would break every chain. To have anyone bound down, anyone chained, anyone that's bound down, that trying to get to you, Father, but the chain is holding them back. Break every chain, Father, on the job. Well, they're trying to get a promotion, Father, but... The chain is holding them back. Lord, break every chain in their home, Father. Whether they're trying to mend a relationship or trying to do things according to you, Father, that you will break the chain. Now, Father, we lift up this community to you. We lift up this city to you, Father. So many things that are going on. Lord, so many problems, Father. So many heartaches and, and pain, so much murder and disappointment, Father, but we know that you're the one that can solve all of these problems. And we tap into your resources right now. Father, we pray for every member at St. Peter, Father, whatever they're standing in need of, Father, we pray that you would give it to them. Father, we pray for every senior right now, Father, that you would keep them, protect them from the evil, harm, hurt, or danger around every student father as they go to and from school. Lord, keep your loving arms, keep your angels camped around them in the name of Jesus. Every parent father that send them off to school, Lord, trusting in you that when they drop them off, that they're going to pick them back up safely. Now, Father, we lift, we lift up our military. Lord, those that are standing on the walls, 
protecting us, Lord. Bless them and their families in a special way. We lift up, Lord, those that may be behind prison walls, behind jail cells, Father. We lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus. Keep them in perfect peace. And Father, we'll be careful to give you all the honor and give you all the praise. And Father, whatever I didn't ask, let the Holy Spirit intercede right now on our behalf and speak to you about it. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 Let's give Reverend Eastman a hand for reminding us not to give up. Now we have announcements.
Sister Wiley when she become general. Amen. Oh, don't forget about us. Amen. 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 It's great to see how good God moved in the lives of those that trusted him. Amen. 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 All of you, I think the last few weeks we've seen recognition. I think next month will be most graduation, more recognition. Amen. So we're grateful. Can't wait to see um, who's coming out, who's doing this and who's doing that. Uh, let me thank the CD uh, department for the job they do uh, for the church, making sure we educate it. Amen. Thank you to our directors. Um, Brother Carter, we appreciate the project. You and Brother Smith held up. Um, it was a joy over at um, the VA. Uh, I walked inside, and they got a nice facility, a nice gym and everything. Uh, I'm grateful for uh, the project, and all of you who've donated to the project, uh, give yourselves a hand, amen, amen, for just blessing someone that, that needed it. I just have um, one announcement, then, Sister Chairman, I want you to give us the church an update on the church. Um, the status, I know what you've seen. You, you go ahead, and I'll make mine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good mm -hmm. uh, afternoon, St. Peter. Um, uh, right now, we, we're, we're really moving along well. They uh, have, they are just about finished installing the ceiling, putting the ceiling back in. Um, and so we know that that's pretty much what's going to be the, for the end of the project is once they reset the ceiling back. We had a problem where we had some, some bricks that we had to remove. So unfortunately, we are still waiting on those bricks to get up out of Arkansas. That storm that hit in Arkansas interfered with our delivery. Um, but then as soon as we get those bricks in, Steve said it would probably take about two days. So uh, we are nearing the end of this project. And we just, by God's grace, we'll be back in our church in May. And when they finish, so then I go by there and see and say, hey, if they're through, why we're not back? We're going to have to have a professional cleaning done when they finish, okay? So we're going to need to have to try to get Stanley Cleans or somebody in there to do a professional cleaning, and then we'll be able to go in. Of course, too, also, we didn't want to stack workers on top of workers, and most certainly didn't want to interfere with what Monticello is doing, but you all remember we had the flood. So those baseboards um, are going to have to be replaced all along back there in that hallway um, and back in some of the rooms. Now that alone won't keep us from going in. Those guys, the, the crew, they, they can work you know, around us on that. But just know that we're nearing the end. We're probably in the last two weeks of, of, of Monticello. Uh, that's what Steve said. He, he's made it two more weeks. Amen. That's right, we can go on and get those bricks in this week. And so then we just go claim it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those bricks coming up out of Arkansas are going to be here for us to get that work done. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Chairman. See, Sister Chairman, she, she saved me from, you know, them running me out of town. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Sister. Y'all heard it from our chairman. Amen. It's coming near. Um, she, she, you held them back off me, so I'm grateful. Um, thanks to Reverend East, man, you all will be getting out of here by 11.30. Amen. Amen. And thanks to the children, Sister Robin. And they singing, you all getting us out of here early. Now, y'all don't need to keep doing this now. I know y'all, yeah, I don't mind leaving early, amen. All right, um, the other last announcement, those who need transportation to uh, the district programs. We want to make the bus of van available. Um, if our regular drivers can't drive, I can drive. Amen. I, I don't mind. You know, if you don't, you know, if you don't, if you want me to know where you live. If you, don't, if you don't want me to know where you live, you just meet me at the church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> But we want the bus and van to be available. Um, our elder has challenged all the pastors to try and um, be more supportive to the district programs. And um, those of you that are able, I know we have different situations, different jobs, but some of us just sit at home. And say, oh, I ain't going nowhere. 
I'm retired. I done paid my dues. I done ran up and down the road for 20 years. I mean, I know what goes into the mines. But some of us are still young, Brother Wiley. And we ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Amen. But I just want to put that out that we have two. We have the uh, missionary on May the 5th on Sunday, 3 o'clock at um, McCullough. And then we have the uh, North Alabama uh, revival on the 22nd through the 24th. It's at Petty's. And then we have May 9th, the checkup meeting and the bishop's um, celebration at Beautiful Zion on May 9th at 6 o'clock. So those are out there. Um, if you can, be supportive. It's good to see all of those who I hadn't seen in a while. I see Sister um, Cooper amen, amen. in the back. Amen. amen. Good, good, good to see you back in the house. And there may be others. Please charge it to my head and not my heart. Um, I know Sister Cooper. She, you know, uh, I, I saw her. And we had a deep conversation. And I must acknowledge her. Amen. <laughs> And praise God. All of you, we love you. Good to see you all this morning. If there are any other announcements. One more. One more. Uh, I was uh, honoring the pastor, uh, congregation. I would personally like to thank each and every one who contributed to the veteran uh, program that uh, we had, and especially Brother Benny Smith and his wife, they know how to push. Amen. They know how to push. <coughs> and uh, I'm lazy myself. <laughs> you know, but if they get me to move it, they got to be good. Amen. <laughs> And the Smith children, our daughter and, and grandchildren was out there, and they was working. Oh, yeah. And uh, they said, they don't come into town, and there's some work that needs to be done. It's not going to get done. They was actually out there working as well. So we're grateful for that. And Amen. Also, some of the other churches. Also, uh, mm -hmm. Brother Bishop. Bishop. Yeah. Brother Bishop. And then we had some from the other churches that Church. were there. Uh, beautiful Zion. Uh, Mrs. Carter, thank you, Sister Carter, for, you know, keeping him in line. <laughs> amen. Amen. Uh, grandbaby was out there, so we're grateful. And you know what? That's what it's all about. Uh, God is going to continue to bless uh, this church and all of us who do that. Okay? Anything else? Sister Reva, we did miss you, too. Oh, I miss you all, too. Yeah. I miss you all, too. Thank you. Thank you. I know that um, the churches in that community was heading up a project. Uh, they, they did contact me um, regarding that, but thank you for bringing that up. They didn't ask the church, they just was uh, the individual people, but thank you for standing up. Those of you, um, I think, they was looking for mostly children, but there's adults as well. Those apartments, all of them, um, all of them burned up. You're right, but you can see it, the front side, yeah. So all for Christian Reds, those of you um, that have um, something that's usable. Amen. Amen. Um, something that's, um, you know, that you would put on. Right. Amen. Now something you bought and said, look, I ain't never going to wear this, so I'm going to give it away. Something that you um, would wear for something that is, is worth it. You know, some people, when we ask, if they ask for donations, um, they're not very well presented. So we want to uh, present some, some good donations. Amen. All right. If there's nothing else, God be with you until you meet again. Tell someone you love them. If you don't love them, just tell them you like them right now. Stand and greet them. Amen.
out here about 1130 or so when you come by them grills, I'm going to inspect the plate. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to tell you, next time the Lord, please speak in the past, don't let me pray, I'm going to stay up here over an hour. I'm going to with y'all. Merciful God, in the loving name of Jesus Christ, we again say thank you, God, for your blessings on the services today. Wherever well, our destination lead us to God, we ask you at this time in the name of Jesus Christ, God, see that we reach you safe and sound. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the spirit of his holy communion, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forever. Let all the saints of God say, Amen.